Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlex here. Got another Master Duel video for you. It is the end of the season, which means it is once again time for one of our tier list videos. So, uh, I have 32 decks picked out here, which might seem like a bit of a weird number, but uh, I did the same method last this time as I did last time for deciding what decks uh, to represent on the tier list. I went over to Master Duel meta, I went through uh, the top decks uh, of the last two weeks, and here we have uh, these 32 decks are every deck within that category that was represented four or more times. So what I mean by that is every single deck that you're seeing represented here on this tier list, all 32 of these, have either topped a tournament, reached Master 1, or had a win streak within Master that was five or more games four times over, at the very least, if not more. So, uh, it's, it's, it's not too uncommon to get comments on these tier list videos of like, you have too many decks, or you have too few decks, or I hit Master 1 with this rogue deck, where is it? Um, you know, if, if your deck is not represented here, that doesn't mean I think it's a bad deck. <laughs> if I went through every single deck that I think would be within the rogue tier, we'd be here for multiple hours. Um, again, I just, the, I ex as I explained, <laughs> I picked uh, the basically the top 32 decks of Master Duel meta uh, in the last two weeks. Again, for the top deck section, all the ones that were represented four or more times by tournament finishes, win streaks, or master placement. So, all right, uh, let's go ahead and just dive right in with the first one here, um, <laughs> which happens to be Stun, as represented by Fossil Dyna Pachycephalo. Stun did take quite a few hits uh, during one of the most recent ban lists, of course, uh, losing out on Floodgates, uh, including a couple of copies of Inspector Border. That said, uh, Stun is absolutely still a force in this meta, and I would expect in some way, shape, or form it always will be, right? Um, and I don't think, although I don't like playing against Stun, um, I think that the existence of Stun keeps decks honest. I think the meta is 100% more diverse because of the existence of Stun, right? Without Stun, or, because I see this sentiment quite often of like, ugh, back row decks, they should just ban all floodgates and good trap cards, and it's like, well, okay, if they did that, then every deck would be a combo deck plus hand traps. Super Heavy Samurai, if there were no back row decks at all, uh, every deck would be like Super Heavy Samurai, half engine, half, half hand traps, so... Although, uh, it is not the most fun always to play against, I do think the existence of Stun and Backrow decks in general is a good thing for the health of the overall format. Uh, Stun has definitely lost a lot of staying power. I would have called Stun mid-rogue before the last ban list, now it's definitely on the lower end of the rogue spectrum there. On the higher end of the rogue spectrum, we have Makonko. Uh, Makonko has been continuously performing very, very well uh, ever since its debut in Master Duel. Uh, being in a best of one and getting to always go second every single game definitely helps that. But at the same time, not every single Makonko deck always goes second. There are definitely going first Makonko decks out there. There are Makonko piles. Um, it's a very versatile uh, kind of archetype. It's it's. I really like this as opposed to Numeron. Numeron is so one note. Like I don't have a problem with like uh, OTK going second decks, but again, when they're as one note as Numeron, it's just so boring. Um, but Makonko can do so so much. Uh, Makonko is like to me has always been deba debatably either the end of tier three or like the beginning of Rogue. I'm gonna put it at like towards the top of Rogue. I think Makonko, it's pretty safe to say, is an upper Rogue deck. Again, almost a tier three deck. You can make the argument that it's tier three, but um, I just think it's more upper Rogue. As always as ever, where exactly these decks end up on the tier list is just kind of, um, you know, it, it's, it's I, I definitely base it in ladder and tournament performance, but at the end of the day, it is all, opinion based um and if you disagree with my placements that's 100 percent fine um of course it is like of course disagreement is not only fine but good um and i would encourage you to comment below um if you think some of these places should be somewhere else that said um just don't be mean <laughs> like discourse is fun rudeness is not please don't be rude um, okay, so let's talk about dinosaurs, because dinosaurs have actually gotten a pretty significant power boost lately uh, from the new secret pack that has the Transcendric stuff, particularly the Ground Xeno, as well as um, whatever the Xenosaurus Transcendric monster is. Um, 
There have been a significant number of dinosaur decks topping and doing well, uh, more so than in the past, to the point where I, I kind of almost want to put dinos in tier 3, I'm not going to lie. I think much like Makonkos, I'm probably just going to put them at the very top of Rogue. I don't know, though. It's It's been a decent number of dino decks. It's it's like Makonko. It's very, very, very close to me. Uh, if you want to put dinos in tier 3, I don't fault you for that at all. I, I definitely uh, think it's like super duper close. I might even end up putting it up there later. We'll see, but... Uh, Endemian. Uh, Endemian is kind of like this on-again, off-again deck as far as, like, representation goes. Like, sometimes it gets there, sometimes it doesn't as far as, like, again, my personal threshold of if I want to include it within the tier list. But it tends to make it there more often than not, I think. I think uh, Endemian is, like, a very, very solid mid-rogue deck for sure. Now we have Nimleria. Nimleria is one of those decks that, like, when, it, when the new selection pack came out... Um, you know, people were talking about how it's not going to be as competitive. I mean, hell, I made statements like that. Um, but I think a lot more Nimleria's decks than I thought would do well have been doing well in this current metagame. I think there were six um, on Master Duel meta when I looked. And again, that's six different lists that either hit Master or Master 1 or had a win streak or topped a tournament. So um, I think that's pretty good showing for Nimleria there. I'm going to put it in Lower Rogue. I do think it is a little bit better than where Stun is at right now, but um, this is one of those decks, too, that I think new pack hype will fall off for it, and probably after this tier list, if I had to guess, we'll stop seeing it represented enough to be put on a tier list, but make no mistake, even when that happens, that does not mean Nemleria has become a bad deck. It just means that people aren't playing it anymore, and as I've always said, there is 100% difference between the two, so... Okay, here we have Bissiel Runic. I definitely have not been seeing it quite as often on Master Duel as opposed to before the new selection pack came out. Uh, again, I think this is yet another example of uh, quote-unquote new deck syndrome. Uh, even though uh, Runic Bissiel didn't have any necessarily new cards that made it viable in Master Duel, it's new because, you know, Joshua Schmidt innovated it. And, um, I mean, I, I said this last time we talked about the tier list, too. Bestial Runic and it seeing success in Master Duel is 100% an example of me of, uh, or an example to me that we don't know all of the viable decks within any given meta at any given point of time, right? If Joshua Schmidt had not topped with Bistio Runic, it would not see a significant amount of play on Master Duel or in the TCG at all. If some random person had topped uh, with Bistio Runic instead of Joshua Schmidt, I'm sure people would be like, well, that was an interesting one-off anomaly, but anyway. Um, but no, when, when a known, renowned, one of the best players in the world does it, oh, now we gotta take this deck seriously. Now this is a meta deck. It's like, you know... But anyway, um, I would put Bishio Rudik in Upper Rogue. I, I don't think it's quite at the level of Dinos or Makanko, but it's a very, very good deck. Make no mistake. God, I, I feel like all a lot of these decks I've been talking about have been, again, borderline Tier 3 Upper Rogue. I do think Sky Striker is among them. I don't know if it's quite as good as, like, Makanko or Di I think it's, like, about the same power level. I'll put it between Makanko and... Uh, Bistio Runic, because I do think this is about where Sky Striker ends up. And again, I can't overstate enough how these four decks here, you could call these four decks Tier 3, and I would not disagree with you. I think there are absolutely arguments that uh, these decks could be Tier 3. And again, I might end up moving them up there later. And here we have yet another one, uh, Trap Tricks. Uh, I'm going to put Trap Tricks like, right next to Sky Striker, because I do think it is pretty much about the same power level. Uh, funnily enough, they're both kind of like control decks that are not stunny. Um, it's just this one is the spell deck, and this one is the trap deck, which is kind of funny. But um, again, now these top five rogue decks. You would call any of these tier three, and I would not necessarily disagree with you. All right, Adventure Phantom Knight. Uh, this is a deck that I am actually willing to call Tier 3, uh, in this current metagame. And I know that there are a fair amount of people who will disagree with me on that, or that will say that Terra Top to 3 is, like, the only reason you're even considering Phantom Knights anymore. Uh, one, that's actually not true. We actually did cover Phantom Knights in deck profile during the last season as well, before Terra Top went to 3. And while Terra Top going to 3 is, for me, what pushes Phantom Knights out of Rogue and into Tier 3, granted, I'll call Phantom Knights probably the bottom of Tier 3. Um, again, you can make an argument that any of these five decks are a little bit better than Phantom Knight, and I don't think I'd necessarily disagree with you, but... Um, 
I do think that Phantom Knight has been underrated historically up until this point. Um, again, people are just now playing it a lot more because Terra Top went to three, but up until this point, it has been a perfectly fine rogue deck that is capable of hitting Master One or topping tournaments. So, okay, on more the upper end of the tier three spectrum, I think is where I'm going to end up putting uh, Kashira as represented by a Rise Heart here. Uh, Kashira and its variants, I don't think have really changed much since the last tier list or over the last season in terms of what I think their power level is, um, or really how many people have been playing them or just how often you've been seeing them. It's like, you know, you've got the Zodiac variant, which is like, you know, its own thing. Um, there's also like pure Kashira, which is still a thing despite not being the most consistent deck in the world. Um, but it's good enough, I think, that it's definitely a very, very solid Tier 3 deck. Um, I think this one is decidedly Tier 3. I think if you try to call Kashira a rogue deck, I think that's a little bit underselling it. But you could also make the argument that it's Tier 2 deck. I wouldn't necessarily disagree with you. But I'll put it right here in Upper Tier 3. Sprite is going to join the likes of these five decks here. I think I'll put it a little bit below Bistial Runic. Um, but Sprite, I don't know. Do I really want to put it below Bishio or Nick? I, I, think I, I think I do. I think it is Upper Rogue, um, about the same power level as these decks here. So, Sprite actually did see a pretty significant boost also from Terra Top going to 3. Um, by, you know, the same way that Phantom Knights did. Um, by access to Cherubini, which then accesses the Adventure line. The cool thing about Sprite's doing Adventure is that you've got the Wandering Griffin Rider and the Gate set up. And then also the Link to Cherubini before you even Normal Summon. So, it's not like you have to have Carrot or Red to Special alongside the Cherubini. Again, we don't Normal Summon doing that line. So, you can have any level 2 monster. It could be Max C. It could be a vanilla level 2 monster, right? And you can still link those off for Sprint or overlay them for Gigantic. It still go into more plays. Um, I actually wonder if Adventure Sprite isn't the best Sprite variant of this meta. It might actually be better than Live Twin or Tri Sprite. But those are both also very solid contenders for best Sprite variants of the current meta. Um, I think they're all about the same power level. So I'll put them all here in what I would still consider to be Upper Rogue. All right, let's talk about Math Mech a little bit here. Math Mech has kind of fallen a little bit in terms of its place in the meta. Whereas before I was calling it like not only tier one, but like probably the best deck of the meta. I think Math Mech is now probably the top tier two deck of the meta. I don't know. I, I think Math Mech is probably tier one as well. Like again, as I've said with a lot of these, I would consider it in, if you considered it a tier one deck rather, I wouldn't disagree with you. But I'm going to call Math Mech the best tier two deck right now. Um, because it has noticeably fallen off a little bit. Now, whether this is due to it's actually a little bit weaker than the decks that are in Tier 1, or um, it just doesn't see as much play as the decks in Tier 1, I'm still trying to figure that out. Um, the deck is hurt by Droll more than I thought it would be, because the thing about Math Mech is that it only does a couple of searches, but... Um, I don't know, it'll still definitely... Well, here's the thing, right? Like... If their first search is circular for Super Fact and then you draw, like, yeah, they can't Alumbertion, but they can probably still just make plays anyway. Um, but if the first search is, like, uh, the Alumbertion for the circular, or the Synapse for the circular, or the Small One for the circular, then it becomes a little bit trickier for Math Mech to be able to uh, have a lot of feasible plays under Droll. I don't know. It's, um... It's debatable. It's this one. I mean, I've said that about a lot of these, but this one I, I do think is highly debatable whether or not this is tier two or tier one. I'm going to call Math Mech the top of tier one, but like a lot of these, I could see myself changing my mind even as soon as later in this video, right? So. Adagnister, I'm finally able to call this a tier three deck. Um, I mean, I think, again, that if everyone knew how to play this deck as well as I wish I was dead, it'd probably be tier two. But. I will say that Adagnister has somehow not only not fallen off, but it does seem like more and more people are picking up the deck and learning it, uh, its ins and outs, and it's funny, I, I see that, that same sentiment that I just stated very commonly among Adagnister players, where they're like, yeah, if, if everyone knew this deck well, it would definitely be more highly represented and highly considered on the tier list by the general Yu-Gi-Oh! community. Um, I think I saw like 10 different lists for adding this tier, uh, as far as like ones that top tournaments or hit Master 1 or had win streaks or whatever, so that's really cool to see. I think I'm definitely comfortable calling adding this tier uh, a tier 3 deck in this meta. I think a lot of people are too. 
Um, same goes for Kashira, Kash or not Kashira, uh, Tier Limit right there. Uh, tier Limit, I would also call a Tier 3 deck. I think it's been there for quite some time. And again, I think most people generally agree with this sentiment. Okay, uh, Pearly. Whew, this one's interesting. Um, the thing about Pearly, let me actually stop and take a drink before I talk about this. I also want to gather my thoughts here for a sec. So here's the thing about Pearly. I think Pearly is definitely underplayed right now, right? Like, we don't have Epperly Nor, the the link or the rank two rather version of Nor yet. So this deck is actually still not at full power. And don't get me wrong, uh, the inclusion of Epperly Nor, the rank two, will absolutely boost Pearly's power level. That said, I think there's going to be this sentiment uh, when that card comes out of like, oh, now Pearly is good in Master Duel again. But I think Pearly is also good in Master Duel right now. Um, you see it still topping tournaments, and one thing I've noticed in particular is that last season, last ban list, or whatever ban list Delicious went to two, uh, as well as regular Pearly, I stopped seeing Pearly at all on ladder after that change, and then it took further hits after that. So I think that a lot of people are just not very willing to try this deck on right ladder right now, um, but it is still a very good deck. I like. I would have called Pearly a tier three deck, but I'm actually instead gonna put it in upper rogue. I, I know, I know, I've been doing that a lot this video, but this one I do. I really think I. I don't know. I, I, I want to put it in Tier 3. I really do think this is still a Tier 3 deck, but I, we just don't have the data, really, to back that up, necessarily. Um, and it, it's just hard, right? It's hard when players just stop playing a deck to know if the deck is actually not as good or not as viable. I mean, certainly it's not as viable because Delicious went to 1 as well as Pretty to 2, uh, in addition to other hits, but... I guess it's hard to know whether or not it's actually being underrepresented when nobody's playing it. I think it is. I think it's still probably a tier 3 deck, but I'm going to put it in Rogue just to kind of play it safe. Um, I also kind of want to talk about Dragon Link. I'll, I'll actually do the exact same thing with it uh, as Pearly. I'm going to put it like down here in like the top of Rogue, um, which is where I had Dragon Link last time. And I still maintain kind of the same point. I'm, I'm not sure. I think these are about the same power level. Like, could really put them in either order, but I'll maintain the same point about Dragon Link that I did before, that this deck is definitely, much like Nor uh, Pearly right now, hugely underrepresented. Uh, to be fair, Dragon Link did also take a pretty significant hit with Sarnir going to one, but that does not make the deck unplayable. I will say I have seen Dragon Link on ladder at least a little bit more often than I have Pearly, which is, again, zero times at all this season for Pearly, uh, as opposed to a handful of times for Dragon Link, but... I think these two decks are probably both tier 3 right now, um, but we just lack the hard data for me to really be comfortable bumping them up there. So I'm going to leave them at the top of Rogue for now. Next up we have Gold Pride. Gold Pride I'm going to put in tier 3. Um, normally I would place Punk in tier 3, but like Gold Pride variants are kind of what's being counted as Punk right now on Bastard Duel meta. Um, but it's not just Gold Pride Punk, although that is the one you think of, right? Pure Gold Pride is also definitely not too bad. Uh, and Evil Eye Gold Pride is something that I've seen top multiple tournaments, or it might be the same person topping multiple tournaments, but still. Um, I think Gold Pride has definitely made a fairly significant splash here in Master Duel. And Terra Top going to 3 uh, was also a huge boon for Gold Pride, again, as it was coming in to Master Duel. I think that Gold Pride does probably have at least a little bit of new deck hype behind it. Um... I wouldn't be surprised if on the next tier list next month I'm bumping Gold Pride down to, to Rogue, but I think for the time being it's it's not it's uh not too outlandish to call this a tier three deck. Marinsis, um, let's see here I'm gonna put Marinsis probably in like eh, I'll put it in like mid Rogue. It's funny how like I think all these decks are like upper Rogue, which is most of the Rogue section, but I do think that is true. Um. Yeah, Marinsis. I I'm trying to think like Marinsis didn't receive any direct support recently. 
And it doesn't really use the firewalls, which are new cybers, the newest, like, generic cyber support. So, I do think that Marinsis is kind of one of those decks like Phantom Knights, where sometimes people just play it, sometimes people don't. But regardless of whether or not people are playing it, uh, it is 100% a super-duper viable deck for this particular metagame. Or, like, any metagame. Like, um... I feel like Marinsis is that one deck where whenever I didn't have it on a tier list, people would just start, like, pounding the keyboard in the comments. Like, where's Marinsis? Where's Marinsis? Uh, and again, just because I don't have a deck on here doesn't mean I think it's bad. Not by any stretch of the imagination. But um, I can definitely see why people were advocating for Marinus for so long. Um, I feel like it's only just now starting to really see the amount of proper representation relative to how good it is in the metagame. Dinomorphia. Dinomorphia is a deck that saw a lot of uh, recent competitive success. So the point where I'm willing to bump it out of the rogue category and actually put it in tier 3, much like adding Mister. Um, now Dinomorphia did get a new support card. Um, the one that's like a solemn. It's not alert. That's the one that brings stuff back, right? What is it called? I don't remember. But uh, you would think that one new support card, especially one that's just like a, a counter trap negate, wouldn't, ne wouldn't necessarily be enough to, like, boost a deck totally out of mid-rogue up to mid-tier 3. But I think it's not just the new support. I think it is, once again, the representation factor. Um, it's something I talk a lot about when I talk about the meta. Because it's not something I hear talked a lot about. But, like, I'm kind of shocked how many players don't seem to understand the difference between representation in the meta versus power level in the meta. So, Dino Morpheus power level in the meta um, was upper rogue leaning into tier 3 for a long time now. But, again, it's not until Dino Morphia gets one new support card, a new piece of support, that it suddenly gets more representation. That's also what I mean when I say new deck hype. And new deck hype is basically my way of saying, I think this deck might be slightly overrepresented. Like, Gold Pride and Nimleria, I think, are very slightly overrepresented. Like, Nimleria might be a bit lower down in rogue when all is said and done. Uh, Gold Pride will probably be Rogue instead of Tier 3 when all is said and done. Um, but yeah, like I said, for Dinomorphia, it's funny how one new support card, which to me doesn't even really change a lot how the deck plays, uh, just more of what it can counter, uh, is still enough to boost it up like a whole tier rating. Uh, but again, for me, this the spot in the tier list are representative of kind of a, a blend between power and representation, right? So when I bump up Dinomorphia, that's mostly me um, showing the representation increase, right? But I think as far as power level goes, it's probably, like, if not the lower end of Tier 3 Upper Rogue. But it's just kind of funny how that can happen. It's I've said it before, I've said it a million times before, and I'll say it a million times after this, too. Um, just because a deck isn't being played, that doesn't mean it's bad. It just means it's not being played. Uh, and there is a difference between the two. Okay, Monadium, as represented by Primeheart, which, funnily enough, the deck doesn't even play... I am definitely comfortable calling this a tier 1 deck after the new support, and we don't even have all of the support uh, for not only the archetype, but also some of the more generic synchro support like the Crimson Dragon, right? But I'm absolutely so comfortable calling Monadium a tier 1 deck. Um, with the uh, Monadium Trisukta and Vizus Amritera coming to Master Duel, those two cards alone have already given Monadium so many more combo lines, like particularly one card lines, um, that you don't have to open two card combos every time. Uh, you get to have a little bit more room for like extenders and such, or not extenders, for a disruption. And yeah, I mean, I think it's funny how just like two... Seemingly, I mean, I don't want to call them seemingly insignificant because we all knew the cards are going to be highly impactful, but it, it's weird, right? You wouldn't think that that alone would be enough to, like, rocket Monadium all the way up to Tier 1, but it is. So, yeah, I, I, I think that Monadium is another deck kind of like Mathmech where you could argue that it's maybe the top of Tier 2 and not Tier 1, but I, I'm comfortable calling Monadium Tier 1 in this meta. Um, I, th I don't know. I, I thought for a minute it might even be better than, like, well, we'll get to that deck in a second, but yeah, Monadium, Tier 1, I think that's a good spot for it. Exosister is a, another very, 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 very solid rogue deck. Um, one that I'll put in Upper Rogue, probably in, like, same vein of, like, Bestial Rudic or tra uh, probably Trap Tricks. So I'll, I'll move it a bit above Sprite here, right? 
I might even put Trap Tricks as, like, the bottom of Upper Rogue, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Or, like, well, uh, no, really, Sprite would be the bottom of Upper Rogue. Maybe even Sprite is leaning into Mid Rogue. But, anyway, that's just, like, super nuanced at that point. But, um, yeah, no, Exorcister, definitely still a very, very solid deck. Super Heavy Samurai. So, I was about to talk about this earlier. I had a minute this format where I suspected Monadium was actually better than Super Heavy Samurai. And I think maybe when it comes to a tournament setting, Monadium is still probably a little bit better than Super Heavy Samurai. But due to its sheer dominance on Ranked Ladder, I'm going to put Super Heavy Samurai above Monadium. And I think it'll be my top tier 1 deck for this tier list. However, I don't necessarily think it's better than every other deck in the meta right now because, again... Uh, the meta right now is so... I mean, it's always divided between Ranked Ladder and Tournament, but this particular meta and the Tier 1 decks within this meta are so divisive between how good they are in Tournaments and how good they are in uh, Ranked Ladder. And Super Heavy Samurai is the one that's definitely a lot better on Ranked Ladder than it is in Tournaments. Now, it is still, of course, topping many, many, many Tournaments on a weekly basis uh, within Master Duel, but... Um, when it comes to another tier 1 deck we'll talk about here in a bit, it definitely does not have quite as many tops, despite the fact that it's seen so much more on ladder than that other deck we'll talk about here in a minute. So, I'm going to call Super Heavy Samurai the top tier 1 deck of this format, but within this is true like generally speaking as well but i think especially in this in this particular metagame any of the decks i put in tier one you could call the best deck of the format and i one wouldn't 100 disagree with you okay uh code talker as represented by Cyanet code deck or also just general cybers pile decks uh that aren't math mech or adding Nister. Uh, when the new cyber support came out, there was a hot minute where they actually had tier 3 representation. Now they definitely slid further down into Rogue. I'll put them, like, right here between Marinsis and Endemion. Which is probably about where they were before, too. Uh, even when they did have the representation to be in tier 3, I think they probably were just a little bit under that power level, if I had to guess. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's still, like, Cyber's pile decks in general. Uh, of course, very, very good, especially with... Uh, circular still being at three, and all the relatively new generic cyber support. So, Vanquish Soul, Vanquish Soul. I am still gonna put in tier two. I think I had it as like the top tier tier two deck last time, and I still think it's a very very solid contender in the meta game. This is another one of those decks that I do think is better in tournaments than it is on ranked ladder. And that vein, I might actually no, I don't know. I was going to put Vanquish Soul above Math Mech on Tier 2, because I think it does actually have more tournament tops represented than Math Mech, but I think Math Mech is probably still just the better deck. I think Math Mech is just a little bit underrepresented at the moment. And of course, I'm not saying, oh, nobody's playing Math Mech. Of course, people are on Math Mech, but um, I think relative to how good it is in the format, um, it's not seeing quite as much play as it quote-unquote should. And when I say should, by the way, I mean if its representation matched its power level, so. Anyway, uh, Speedroid, represented by the Rubber Band Shooter. Speedroid has been seeing a lot of more play than it does in the past lately. To no one's surprise, probably because Teratop is at 3. This is one of those decks where I can totally see the hype falling off, and um, next tier list, it might not even be... Uh, you know, represented enough to make the tier list, but um, I've played against Speedroid in tournaments. Like, Speedroid's the kind of deck where you might think, like, oh, you would never even see it in a tournament because it's not even close to that level. But no, I've, I've played against Speedroid in tournaments, and uh, it definitely puts up more than a good fight. It's, it's definitely a good deck. Like, um, I think every deck on here is a good deck, by the way. Um, but Speedroid is one of those decks that you wouldn't really think of being represented in the meta, and yet, here we are. So, um, I'm gonna put it down here, though I do think it is lower Rogue, but, um, again, was still good enough to have multiple lists representing it on Master Duel meta, and thus making the cut onto this tier list. Okay, let's talk about Branded now. Uh, Branded is that other deck that I do want to put in Tier 1. I think I will put it here between Sword Soul... Uh, or, sorry, uh, Super Heavy Samurai, rather, uh, and Monadium. Um, but again, if this were a tournament tier list, I think that tier one would probably look a little bit more like this. 
Um, you know, it's just like, again, I guess I am factoring in Rank Ladder a little bit more because that's what I play most often. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think Branded Espia is like a totally fine deck for a Ranked 1 Ladder as well. There was like, there were some people, when I made my like best of one versus best of three people, there were some of the comments that I felt like assumed that I was saying that Branded Espia is not good in Ranked Ladder and that Super Heavy Samurai is not good in tournaments. Then that's not at all what I'm saying. That's just like a, an internet problem in general, right? If you say a deck A is better than deck B, you'll always have people going, "Oh, so what? Deck B is just terrible then?" And it's like, no, <laughs> that's not what I said. Um, so yeah, no, I, I I think even on a ranked ladder, I mean, I say even on a ranked ladder, like in ranked ladder and in tournaments, Brandon Despia is absolutely a tier one deck and one of the best decks you can be using. Uh, in this current metagame, and I don't think Sarnier to 1 is going to super significantly change that at all. I'm kind of starting to wonder if Sarnier to 1 is even going to keep people off of grass builds. It's kind of what I thought when I saw that, but um, no, I still see a lot of post baneless grass builds out there, so maybe that'll be the case. Who knows? Okay, we're in the home stretch. Just a few more decks here. Ninja, I am going to call Ninja like mid to lower rogue. I'll put it between Endemian and Nimleria. It's probably somewhere in this neighborhood. Um, cool to see it's still doing so well after all this time. Um, even if I don't like playing against it. <laughs> even if this is my literal least favorite deck in the world to play against right now, and it is too. I fucking hate playing against Ninja. Um, it's still really cool that a, uh, a structure deck that introduced a lot of very meta-relevant support for the deck, um, was able to boost it to a level where we are consistently seeing it uh, represented many times over on Master Duel meta, enough to put it in the rogue tier. So, again, I might not like this deck, but that doesn't mean I don't want to see this deck succeed. Okay, Labyrinth. Labyrinth, I will also put in tier 2. I'll put it a little bit above Vanquish Soul. Uh, it's like this, you could really make an argument either way. Hmm. I'll leave it like this, but again, if you want to say this, that's fine. I don't think that's wrong at all, but yeah, Lab, I don't know. Uh, the Shan Dragalier to two hit is like uh, nothing. <laughs> it's, no, it's a nothing hit. I was actually watching um, Joshua Schmidt's reaction to the, uh, the, the ban list there, and he made a really good point that if anything, less furniture just kind of de the furniture builds because with both Stovey and Dragalier at 2, that makes Ku Clock like much less better um, and really only incentivizes more stun Labyrinth builds. So not only do I think that Stovey and Dragalier to 2 are not significant enough hits, I think the impact they have will not be a good one for the archetype or their meta as a whole. Um, oh, no, not the meta as a whole. Um, but mostly just the archetype. And when I say not a good one, I, I I will be honest. That is me being biased and not liking stun decks. I That's fair. That's fair. Okay. So, I guess whether or not you think that's a good change for Lab to undergo is, at the end of the day, your opinion. But I don't disagree with that notion that with less furniture, players who are on Lab are a little bit more incentivized to play more stun builds than uh, furniture builds. Okay, uh, we got Naturia. Naturia Runic, pretty much, entirely. Um, it's all the only Runic variant that got represented, which I think is really sad. I know, I know, a lot of people are like, yay, fuck Runic! But, um, again, I think Runic is a very interesting archetype that lifted up a lot of decks. But that Fountain to one hit, as time goes on, we just see less and less Runic decks around. Um, or any of its, like, cool variants. And... You know, again, we have stun. Stun is not on a runic anymore, but stun is very much still a thing. So it's like, again, it's like I'm fucking psychic or something. Who knows? But anyway, <laughs> um, nature or runic. Where will I put this? I'll put it in upper rogue. Probably about the same level as like. I don't know. I'm gonna bump exos down a little bit. I do think they're better than sprite, but I think bestial runic and trap tricks are probably better than. Eh, it's like they're comparable. I'll, I'll put them in here then, but. Yeah, I like this spot for Nature Area Runic. I might do it like this, maybe, but yeah, I think that's good. Okay. Uh, heroes. Wow, heroes have been, like, here the whole time. 
They've always been represented enough for me to consider them. They've always been around in the meta, and they've always been like a mid-rogue deck within the meta, and I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. Uh, Heroes, just a very, very solid deck all around. Rika Sun Avalon has hugely fallen off in Master Duel, which I find really interesting because it didn't take any hits in Master Duel, but it did take some TCG hits recently. Although I don't think it's enough of a factor to really warrant, like, I don't know actually though, it might be. What I was going to say is that, like, I wonder how often that impacts Master Duel, especially on the TCG side. Like, if a deck gets hit in the TCG, then people who use it in the TCG might feel less inclined to play in Master Duel, especially if they play more TCG than the Master Duel, because they might want to play a deck in Master Duel they feel they can at least translate some of that skill over to the TCG. So, although it sounds weird and counterintuitive, I think that the Rika hits in the TCG did contribute to now there seeming to be less Rika decks represented on Master Duel meta. Um, I've always called the deck Tier 3, and I'm still willing to do that, but I'm going to put it at the very bottom of Tier 3, which, to be fair, I think I usually do anyway. But I think this deck is definitely, like, super hugely underrepresented in Master Duel right now. Um, and again, I, I think that's because, and especially because the data that I'm getting is from the TCG side, that's also what kind of inclines me to think that, so. <laughs> and then we have Sword Soul, uh, for last. I laugh because I just had that video yesterday. Um, where, you know, I think people were erroneously calling uh, Sword Soul a mid-deck. I think Sword Soul is very much still a Tier 3 deck. I'm going to put it, like, above Gold Pride, even. I think it's, like, right about here. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's a good spot for it in the metagame. You can make an argument for this as well, but I think that's fine there. Um, and this despite the fact that not only has it taken no significant ban list hits, but the build itself hasn't even really changed all that much. Sword Soul is just so consistent and has an, just enough room for meta-dependent disruption that it continues to be meta-relevant. And, especially with the Sword Soul structure that's coming out, um, I think if you're a new player and looking for a uh, competitive deck to kind of ease you into competitive Yu-Gi-Oh!, you cannot do much better than Sword Soul. Um, not only in terms of how easy it is to learn, but rewarding it is to also learn, uh, as far as like the skill floor versus ceiling goes, um, but also how easy it is to get, especially moving forward once we get the structure deck into the game. So. I'm glancing over my tier list here. I'm seeing if there's anything I want to move around. Adding this tier might be a little bit high. Maybe everything else is just a little bit low, honestly. Nah, I'll bring adding this tier down here. And I think now I'm fine with that. <laughs> okay. Okay, yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely fine with what I have right in front of me here. So. Yeah, this is it. These are the top 32 decks of what I consider to be the top 32 decks of Master Duel right now, which again might seem like a weird number, but again, we pulled those numbers from it, Master Duel meta. And as I've stated multiple times, I think that there are a lot of decks that are viable that are not pictured here as well. Um, again, even if a deck is rogue, what that means to me is that it can hit Master 1 um, with a dedicated pilot. Um, and also even seek in a tournament top, I think. But again, all of these decks have done one of those two things, at least one of those two things, multiple times over. Cannot overstate that enough. But yeah, definitely let me know what you think about this list in the comments below. Um, and that is going to do it. For now, let's just go ahead and move to the outro. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video, that means a lot to me. Uh, it's also a great way to support the channel, so thank you very much for it in that way as well. Uh, if you're interested in supporting the channel in other ways, uh, like the very special patrons that I am thanking here, uh, you can do so by checking out some of the links in the description, one of those goes to the Patreon, uh, where you can join these fine folk and support the channel that way. I do post daily content over on Patreon, so uh, you do get something for support there and if you're interested I also have a coaching tier option uh, as well details again will be on patreon in the link below uh, also in the description linked below is my twitch page where I stream uh, a few times a week you can go ahead and check that out follow or subscribe over there uh, if you ever want to catch me live uh, you'll also find my second YouTube channel if you feel like subscribing over there to watch some of the twitch VODs as well as some additional uh, non-yu-gi-oh related content that I make over there. Uh, again, 
any of those links you want to check out is all a great way uh, of supporting. But again, even if you don't do that, just watching was also a fantastic way to support. And once again, I have to thank you so very much. But uh, in any case, this is Hexlex. I'm going to be signing out and I'm hoping you have a fantastic day.